Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about gun safety on a film set uh, because we definitely don't want to have another Alec Baldwin incident happen. Uh, now in this video I'm going to kind of take you through the different kind of guns you might encounter while you're on a film set uh, and also a safe way to handle them. And then I'm going to show you a very realistic and also very affordable way of having actually guns in your film without actually using real guns which uh, basically means it's 100% safe. There's, there's no way that you can actually have an, an accident whether you know, somebody dies or is injured. Actually, for a lot of people who work on films, they don't realize that this latest incident with Alec Baldwin is, is not the only time that such a tragic accidents happen. There's actually a lot of gun accidents on film sets. We just don't hear about a lot of them because uh, many of them are either low profile kind of film sets or film sets in other countries. And also very often, uh, maybe somebody doesn't die, but they're very badly injured. And again, that usually doesn't make the news. Now, ever since the Alec Baldwin incident, uh, I know that there's been kind of a lot of discussion between filmmakers about guns. And a lot of filmmakers, because they grow up in big cities, usually places where basically they're not around guns, uh, the, the, usually their opinion is that guns are just bad. We shouldn't have guns. Now, don't worry, this video is not going to get into uh, any kind of politics or basically opinions about whether guns uh, should be allowed or not. Uh, this is just strictly talking about guns on a film set but i think that if you are working as a filmmaker the one of the things or skills that you should definitely acquire is how to handle properly a firearm now it doesn't really matter whether you like guns or you're anti-gun uh, if you're a filmmaker at some point in your life you're going to be around guns and that's because again you might be working on a film might even be an anti-gun film but you're going to have guns as a prop uh, why? Because, well, as filmmakers, we tell stories uh, about our world. And in our world, whether, again, you like it or not, we have guns. So I think the best thing is actually if everybody who works on the film, I don't care whether you're doing, you know, props or whether you're doing makeup or catering or definitely if you're an actor, you should be able to know how to properly handle a gun. If you're going to be there on a film set, and I don't care whether it's the director, the producer, somebody, you know, at the top of the food chain in the film industry, if they're mishandling a gun and putting everybody at risk, including you, I think it's your duty to step in and basically, you know, correct that situation. Uh, but actually, in some cases, it actually helped me get promoted because I kind of stepped in, uh, you could say resolved the, the bad situation and then somebody else noticed me and, and kind of, you know, you could say helped me later on in my career. But anyway, so the first thing I can, I'll talk about is just the kind of the basic gun safety. So here on the table, I've got different guns. Some are real and some are actually prop guns, but I'm going to show you how to handle all of them the safe way. Uh, so here, this is a real handgun. And the first gun safety, uh, you could say tip, lesson, or things to, things to remember is that you always treat a gun as if it's loaded. I don't care whether it's real or not, just treat it as if it's loaded, especially if you don't know whether it's a real or prop gun. Because a lot of these guns, like I said, if, if you just look at them, even from fairly up close, you might not know whether it's a real gun or not. Uh, and definitely if you're somebody who doesn't know anything about, about guns. So always treat uh, every gun as if it's loaded, meaning you only point it in the direction that you know that if the gun were to you know, discharge, it's not going to hit anything or you know, injure or kill anybody. So only point it in a safe direction. And then the next tip is always keep your uh, trigger finger out of the, the, the trigger guard. So you're keeping it always on the side. So with a, with a handgun, it would be like this. Um, let's see here with the rifle. Uh, it's the same idea. You're holding it, but you have your finger like this. Now, why do you do that? Uh, well, there's multiple reasons. If you're actually walking around with a real gun, uh, whether, let's say, something goes off, some loud sound, if your finger was actually in here, and I'm going to do it right now. I know it's not correct, but I'm just showing you. So I don't want to hear any, any comments below. Uh, I did check the guns. They're all safe. But anyways, uh, yeah, if you put your finger in here, and let's say a loud sound goes off, you could twitch and pull the trigger. Uh, same thing if, let's say, you're walking with a gun. You could trip and that triggers a muscle reflex and you can fire a gun uh, basically unexpectedly. So that's the reason why you always keep your gun like this and only, only when you have it on target in a safe direction and you're ready to fire, that's when you put your uh, trigger finger inside the guard and you pull the trigger. 
Now, let's say you're on a film set, and again, like I said, somebody out there, you know, grabbed a handgun, rifle, whatever, and is not obeying those two basic rules. Their finger is inside the, the trigger guard, and they're just kind of, you know, swiping the, the, the nozzle of the gun or the rifle all over the place. And you're, again, you're not sure whether it's a real gun or not, whether it's loaded or not, things like that. First thing you do is you come up to them, grab the gun, or tell them, point the gun down. And you take the gun from them and what's the first thing you should do you should check is it a real gun so whether for example if you're working with a pistol like this is a semi-automatic you're going to rock the slide you're going to look inside the chamber which is right here is where the bullet would get chambered you look inside there see is there any bullet if it's empty then you know there's no bullet in there also make sure that there's no magazine in here that, that can fit uh, the, the basically the, the bullet into the chamber because for example let's say you were checking the gun and you go, okay, there's nothing in the chamber. Well, now, by racking the slide, you let go of this, you just chamber it around. Even if you take out the magazine now, you might be like, okay, I have all the bullets here. Well, no, now they have a bullet in the actual chamber. So that's why you always check that. And a good kind of technique is actually to, in a pistol, is to always rack it a few times. Take out the, the magazine, rack it a few times, and then still keep it in a safe direction. So that's sort of like, I would say, the first thing you're going to do if you're going to, again, see somebody mishandling a gun or if somebody hands you a gun. A lot of these accidents, I'll tell you guys, is that uh, whether it's the actor, whoever it is, so, you know, basically it gets handed a gun and they just assume, oh, okay, it's safe. I can start pointing it around and start shooting it. Well, no, always grab the gun and always check it. Okay, is there something in there? Rock it a few times and things like that. Now that's with a semi-automatic pistol. Semi-automatic simply means uh, each time you pull the trigger, uh, the bullet comes out because the gases expand and push the bullet out, but some of the gases are used basically to uh, crack the gun or, or you know, rack the slide in this case and load the next uh, round. Kind of the same thing would happen with like a rifle, whether it's this uh, AR-15 or AK-47 that I have up here, the same thing. You fire the round, and when the, when the bullet comes out, these, some of these gases actually come up here. They push a piston and basically rack the slide of this, and they chamber the next round. So meaning that each time you pull the trigger, it fires a round and loads the next round. So you're essentially ready to keep on firing, and you can keep on pulling, pulling the trigger and until you basically run out of the ammunition. Uh, now, a fully automatic gun would be pretty much the same thing. The only difference is, is that you don't have to individually pull the trigger for each shot you just pull hold it and it will empty out the whole magazine and then it will stop or if you let go of the trigger it will stop now there are guns and rifles that are uh, basically you could say sort of single action so meaning you you have to actually chamber the bullet yourself and then you fire it and then you have to chamber the next one uh, i don't have a rifle like that on me today i do have for example this revolver so uh, again, I've checked all the guns that they're safe, but this is a sort of, you could say, this classic revolver. You have a little drum here. You load your bullets all in here. And then when you're ready to fire, you pull back the hammer and pull the trigger. Each time now, if I want to fire again, i got to pull the, tr the, the hammer back again. And again and again. If I simply, you know, see, pull the trigger, so I fire once. If I press the trigger again, it will not fire. I have to basically, you could say, manually, you know, go to the next round. Uh, with a gun like this, it's a little bit sometimes harder, especially this one, kind of like this very old, old style kind of a gun, because uh, you can either take out the whole drum or you can just open it here. Uh, and and it's, it's gonna be the case with all of these um, revolvers. And you can, you know, in this case, you gotta half cack the, the gun and then you just rotate it and you see, okay, is it empty or is there some bullets there? Uh, in the case of this kind of revolver, uh, you can, you know, actually pull this and then you can see here uh, when the drum comes out, you can kind of see it up here right away. Do you have bullets or not? So we do have bullets in here, but they're actually prop bullets. And the difference between a prop bullet is that it looks the same as a real bullet, except it's not. <laughs> Meaning uh, this bullet uh, does not actually have gunpowder, does not have a primer, and it does not actually have a round. The bullets itself, if you were to look at it, especially if you don't know anything about guns, you'd be very, you know, you, you could very easily confuse this for a real bullet, because again, it's made to resemble a real bullet, except it's not. Uh, so that's the reason why when you have a prop gun on a film set, 
it's so easy, again, to confuse it for a real gun and vice versa. If you have a real gun, somebody might think, oh, it's a prop, right? It's safe, and they start pointing it. Well, if you follow the first basic rules, which is always treat every gun as if it's loaded, well, you would not point it in an unsafe direction and you would not pull the trigger unless, again, you checked and you knew. So in this case, again, you would take out the drum and then you check, make sure there's no bullets. If the bullets are in here, take them out and confirm. Best way that you can confirm is, you know, ask whoever it was that was loading it or if you really, really want to, I guess you could fire the gun in a safe direction and just make sure that these are actual dummy rounds, meaning they will not actually go off. Uh, because again, very well-made uh, dummy rounds are gonna look just like the real thing. All right, next let's talk about the actual bullets or rounds. So first one is I have a dummy round, meaning it's, again, it's made to look like the real thing, but it doesn't have a primer or gunpowder. Uh, or the actual bullet, uh, you know, on top of it. Um, next, I have uh, a nine millimeter here, and I have two. I have nine millimeter, uh, that's a real bullet, and then I have one that's a blank. And you'll notice that both of them, I mean, they look uh, pretty much identical uh, to each other. And, uh, and what I mean by that is that they both have the casing here in the bottom. If you were to look here uh, on this side, you'll notice that we, they, both of them have you know, the same kind of diameter. They will, will have a primer here in the middle. And then the casings are, again, are the same size. The only difference being that the real bullet actually has a metal or lead, basically, bullet on top. The uh, blank round just has the metal, basically, from the casing is kind of crimped. And there's nothing there. So what would happen if you were to put this blank in a real gun is that uh, you know, the, whether it's the hammer or, if, again, it's a semi-automatic, you're going to have the slide rock, and then uh, when you pull the trigger, the pin is going to hit the primer. That sets up the primer to explode, and then that actually, uh, you could say, sets on fire or, you know, combusts all the gunpowder in it, which then turns that into gases. Gases have to expand, so they pull out, basically push out, you know, uh, and come out any way that they can. Since the least amount of resistance is through the open you know, a nozzle or the barrel of the gun, then it's gonna push out this bullet, right, in normal, normal situation. But with the blank, all you're gonna have is that gas come out. Now, something a lot of people don't know is, just because you have uh, basically blank rounds, does not mean that they're very safe. They can still get really badly injured. Like, I've been to some film sets where a lot of actors got badly burned, uh, had their eyes, you know, damaged, and it's all because somebody, like let's say one actor, they didn't maybe rehearse it, whatever it was, you know, it was a chaotic situation and they started firing off the blanks very close to somebody's face. Another thing they can do is they can damage your eardrums. Firing a blank is pretty much just as loud, uh, maybe a little bit quieter uh, than, than a real round, but very close to there. So it, it can damage your hearing, especially if somebody fires it very close to you. And even though, again, there's no bullet that is, you know, gonna come out when those gases are, are expanding, uh, those gases themselves are very hot and you'll notice actually when you're firing a uh, blank like for example in this shot uh, there's actually a lot more th stuff like whether it's the, the tip of the the casing a little bit of the paint that's on it and 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 basically there's more gunpowder i think so basically there's more stuff coming out of the nozzle than when you actually fire a real round when you fire a real real round yeah, you're going to have the bullet come out, which can be deadly, but you don't have as many gases, basically. Now, the reason why blanks kind of eject a lot of this crap, as I call it, uh, out of your gun is because uh, they are meant to, to basically make a sort of a bigger, you know, appearance, bigger kind of a, a, a muzzle fire uh, so that it's more visible on camera. Because if you're shooting uh, real guns and you're recording like regular speed, and if you were to play it back, uh, regular speed, sometimes you don't even see anything. All you're gonna see is just a bit of smoke afterwards come out. Uh, yeah, and then even if you were to slow it down, it happens very quickly and sometimes you could not, uh, you, with real guns, you might not even, even capture on camera the little bit of fire or the gas that comes out of the, the nozzle of the gun. So blanks are made to basically kind of amplify that so that you can kind of, it's a bit easier to catch it on camera. They're also very, very dirty, which is the reason why I say it's crap because when you're using them with real guns, uh, they're, they're basically can, you know, really dirty up your gun. Now, another thing, thing to remember is uh, difference between most prop guns and then a real gun is 
really the only thing is the mechanism or usually it's the spring like let's say in the semi-automatic pistol the spring that basically pushes the slide back is not as hard or basically doesn't need as it doesn't have as much resistance and that's because when you're firing blanks the again there's not as much pressure being built up because you don't have a bullet that needs to be pushed out so the gases come out fairly easy and because of that the, the there's not as much back force to be able to rock the, the gun again so you can keep on firing so really most prop guns as people call them are really just real guns that have been modified so that the slide operates a lot easier just it's a little bit you know again it's a, a lot lighter the spring that's really the only difference so that means if you put a real bullet in it it can still fire a real bullet so that whole terminology of like oh well we had a prop gun on set uh, well it kind of goes out the window because again a prop gun is most cases is just basically a slightly modified real gun that can shoot real bullets now in my case i don't have here actually those types of guns so to fire these blanks i used regular guns and you'll notice again because there's not enough of that backward pressure uh, you'll notice that in this case it doesn't even rack the slide of this gun and for example when i was shooting uh, the blanks that i have here for the uh, ar-15 it basically moved it slightly back but not enough to be able to recycle the round not only that but actually it would usually just jam up so badly i had to like kind of you know try it a few times to kind of to clear the guns so uh, again remember real gun versus a prop gun that can fire blanks is pretty much the same thing just uh, the, the spring mechanism is a little bit lighter now getting back to the difference between a blank and a real gun so again here i have a 223 uh, round which is for the ar-15 and I have the real and then I have the, the blank one and again it operates the same way as this nine millimeter here that I have uh, meaning that uh, again in a real gun if those gases are expanding they're going to push those bullets out right well when you're shooting blanks again those gases are still expanding and they're coming out of the nozzle of the gun so like I said they if you're really close they can damage your hearing they can definitely burn you your skin because it's had gases coming out uh, so you definitely got to be careful with that but there's been actually a lot of lot of accidents where uh, let's say you have an actor who is given a gun and in between breaks or while he's talking to other actors director whatever he you know especially with especially with rifles you'll notice people will kind of grab a gun and kind of rest the nozzle down you know as if they're kind of using it to to kind of relax or brace themselves so they're go like, going like this they're talking and la, 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 okay and they especially if you put it on a dirty surface or on the ground uh, most likely you're going to end up with something in stuck in the nozzle there then you put that blank round in here and again there might not be a bullet that's coming out but you got to remember now you might have a piece of rock or other things even a little bit of debris like a little bit of dust and things like that that's stuck in there when that comes out at the speed that those gases come out if that gun is pointed at an actor uh, it's gonna hurt or like I said it, it might really really badly injure them it could actually even kill them if it's you know it could be rare but there is always that chance so that's why I would say if you're working on a film you really just want to stay away from any kind of gun that uses actual gunpowder so whether it's again it's using the blanks or using the, you know uh, the real bullets which obviously you don't want to use that on film set but like I said the blanks can very easily be confused for real bullets or the blanks themselves can become very dangerous and that's why i think on a film set it's it's best to actually not have real guns so for example this gun can only fire bb balls but that's you know very uh, again much slower uh, but it also to do that you have to load it with co2 gas which uh, again if you just don't put the co2 gas or even if you had it in there but you're you were to use uh, actual dummy rounds then again you know that it can't fire it and a real round wouldn't even fit in this uh, basically this nozzle because in here it might look like a full-size nozzle but inside there it's so thin it's so narrow because it's designed to for these little bb balls that a real bullet is just not going to be able to, to go in there and you can actually buy a lot of prop guns that again will not even have a chamber at all meaning a round can't actually be chambered in there so even if you were to put a real bullet you would pull the trigger they'll, again most likely there will be no pin striking the primer so it wouldn't even go off but even if it did go off it might maybe hurt the actor's hand but no bullet will come out because there's no chamber so again if you want to be really safe on a film set and you're gonna you know your, your story requires you to have a gun uh, i would even say use uh, airsoft guns you know basically these very realistic looking airsoft guns that you can buy right now 
um, that, that I actually used in a lot of the films. Like, for example, I did this film, uh, NWO, United We Stand, and all of the guns in that film are airsoft guns. And it uh, looks very realistic, I think. You know, a lot of people thought they were actually real guns. Uh, and I actually have a whole video kind of talking about what I did to kind of brush and paint these guns to make them look like they were kind of weathered and real metallic, even though some of them were made out of cheap plastic. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of the, the stuff, like for example, whether a gun looks real on screen or not, it really, most of the time, it comes down to uh, the sound. So if you have somebody pull the trigger, you know, just adding that, that sound right away makes it feel like, okay, a gun just went off. But then, uh, usually, even if you were to add for one frame, like a little, a bit of kind of a fire effect in there, and then add like this stock footage that you can get easily, or you can make your, your own stock footage by recording, let's say, firecrackers going off against a black background. And then you can just put that in there with a screen layer, uh, and you can do that in any editing software. Just put it on top of your, your footage, just literally for that one frame. You don't even have to track it, really, because it happens so quick, again, that it's just that effect, just, you know, as long as the audience sees something, okay, something goes off, uh, uh, you know, and then you add that sound effect, it's going to look like a real gun, except you don't have real gun on the film set this way, and then you know it's 100% safe. And that's actually what I did in this case, so you guys kind of can see what I did with this revolver. Uh, this is how the shot looks just, you know, after I filmed it. And then here I add a little bit of the, the effect, just for one frame. And then the final thing with the sound looks like this. And to be honest, it can actually look a lot more impressive than firing, let's say, a real, you know, revolver. Uh, which is, basically, this is how it looks. Now, what if you're shooting uh, a scene where your actor is supposed to have a semi-automatic pistol, for example, or, or let's say a rifle? Uh, so in this case, you can actually buy, and this is you know, one of these airsoft guns, uh, you can buy these airsoft guns that uh, actually will allow you to have moving parts. Again, this is made out of cheap plastic, but looks real on screen, you know, m minus the, the pink, uh, you could say, nozzle. So you could paint that easily. I just didn't do it for this video, but again, you could paint, spray paint it very easily. And again, I have a video that I did a long time ago kind of showing how I convert these airsoft guns and make them look very real. Uh, but then, for example, let's say if it was, if it was uh, a normal kind of a speed shot, you would just be pulling a trigger and you could just fake it with your hand moving. And then you can actually, because really in reality, when, a, when an actual real semi-automatic handgun fires, the slide racks back and forward so quickly that all you're going to see is literally for like one frame, you're going to see this kind of blurred. It happens so quickly. So in that case, you don't even need a gun that has a slide that moves back and forth. You can very easily fake that. Uh, literally, like, uh, let's say it's an After Effects or, or in any editing software, uh, literally all you do is you, for one frame, copy that slide, move it back, add some blur, and then when you play it back, it looks like the slide you know, goes off like that. Now, if you're going to do a slow motion, let's say close-up shot, and you actually want to see the slide go off, well, like I said, you can buy a gun like this. Uh, this one was actually still fairly cheap. It was like $37 on Amazon. Again, the link's provided. And you'll no notice this. See, I pull the trigger, and the slide actually racks back. and actually gives you a nice sound. So, again, if you're filming and you want the other actors to be able to react, oh, you know, I'm getting shot, well, then you'll, they'll be able to have that, that sound cue and you'll be able to have that realistic slide motion. Then all you got to add is the muzzle flare and the, and the smoke. So again, as a recap, I'm going to tell you, you're on a film set, somebody grabs a gun, you don't know if it's real or not, uh, you know, and it looks like this. You take the gun from the person, if you see them mishandling it, and you say, whoa, 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 hold up, buddy, don't do that. And you just simply take the gun from them, and first thing you're going to do is you're going to empty out the magazine, Rack the slide, make sure it's, you know, again, there's nothing in the chamber. And also this way you can inspect whether it's a real gun. And then put it away, or then you can give them, say, okay, the gun is clear. Now you can practice with it or whatever, rehearse your scene. Again, the same thing with, let's say, a rifle. Whether it's this or the AK, you know, you're just going to have the button release for this, for the magazine in a different place. But again, you take this out, you rack the, the slide here. And make sure, okay, there's nothing in the chamber, it's clear, 
then you can hand the gun over to the person or just put it away in a safe place. Now, that's where also just having knowledge about guns is again helpful. So even though you might not personally like guns, you don't wanna own guns, things like that, you don't think civilians should own guns, that's all totally fine. It's just like I'm saying, I think it's good to know and have that skill. It's like, for example, a person that I knew once that, you know, basically was, had, you could say, terrifying fear of water, of deep ocean water. And that person did not like to go to the ocean, you know, wanted to stay away from the coast and all that stuff. But then I found out he didn't know how to swim. And I was like, seriously, like, you got to learn how to swim because even though you might not like water, you, do, you don't plan to ever be near water, there's things that might happen that might be outside of your control. And you now, if you're a human being living on planet Earth, there's water here. <laughs> so uh, you might even fall into a river or somewhere that might not be as deep as the, the deep sea ocean somewhere. But you, having that basic skill of swimming uh, can save your life or can even save another person's life. You might see somebody else drowning and you knowing how to swim can go to that person's rescue. And again, you don't have to like swimming. You don't have to like, you know, water but at least learn that skill, basic skill. And again, I would say, if you're gonna be working on a film set, definitely learn those basics about guns. But then another thing I would say is, especially for all of you kind of indie filmmakers, directors, producers, uh, you know, if, if, if you want realistic looking guns in your films, cheaper and a, a safer, way safer way, and, and a lot easier, I think, is to get these airsoft guns uh, you can get, again, the ones that have the nice moving slides and moving parts, paint the tip. Uh, you can add the nice little metal brushings to make it look like real metal and all that stuff. Uh, and then just add the little muzzle flare, some smoke, sound effect. And right there, you have very realistic looking guns uh, in your films without any of the danger of actually using, whether it's real or movie prop guns. Uh, on your film set. As I said, some of the links will be provided in the description of the video, so you guys can check out my film, you can check out the making of that film, how I kind of, you know, make my guns, my airsoft guns look realistic. And also I have an in-depth tutorial on how to do uh, the muzzle flares in uh, your, you know, post-production, so you can add that easily into your film. And that's it for this one. Uh, once again, the website is tomatosfilms.com. Stay safe and otherwise have fun. Bye.